welcome to episode nine of Carrots and Cosmos. Welcome to episode nine of uh, Carrots and Cosmos. Um, uh, I was on holiday last week, so Jazz did her own um, episode, episode eight, um, where she sang me a lovely, a lovely song. I loved the song, so thank you so much, Jazz. It, it really made me laugh. Um, and I know in it you said you'd be very cross if I didn't bring you back a present. So um, put you back. Quick like present, I'll show you now because I don't know, I, I might be seeing you in a couple of weeks, but um, some biscuits from the village store in Castleton. Um, and they're very, very nice. And the bread, if anyone ever goes to Castleton, visit here. The bread and the sausage rolls and stuff. Lovely. Um, very nice, aren't they, Dusty? Yes. So, Make sure you share them, share them with Kath, because she's been doing lots of work. Um, I saw in episode eight, she must be knackered. Um, share them with Kath's mum and dad, but um, just don't tell Alan, because I think Alan will eat them all. So keep them away from Alan, okay? So I think it's time we went over to Jazz, see what she's been up to. So Jazz, are you winning? I think so, Gem. I've been quite busy with my broad beans and my potatoes, sowing, potting on. April is such a busy month. But um, here's what I've been up to, starting with my tomatoes. Here's my tomatoes. You see they're getting their true leaves and everything on now, so I think it's about time. Some of them, this one's getting quite tall. Um, I think it's about time I potted them up into their own little pots. So here they are. So all four of the money maker did come up in the end, um, and only two of the gardener's delight didn't come up. So I'm going to put them into this uh, size, which is about seven centimeters across, and um, I'm going to do the money maker first. This is terrible, but because I don't like them as much as the gardener's delight, um, and they look a bit sturdier as well, I'm going to do these ones first because I need to get into my stride with these and hope that I don't break them. So hopefully by the time I do the Gardener's Delight, I'll be a complete expert. So, here they come to their new pots. So this is all my money makers done. Uh, now for the Gardener's Delight. Incidentally, in this potting mix, I've put um, a little bit of worm cast uh, left over from last year and some of this um some of this charge or beetle frass beetle frass that sounds like a band name beetle frass anyway so that's gone into this compost and um because this is sewing compost I've, i'm using here so i thought i'd put a um a bit more nutrients back into it or into it Anyway, now for the Gardener's Delight. Okay, I'm on to my last Gardener's Delight. So, handful of the... I'm planting them quite, well, fairly deep. Put it down just a little bit. So I remember the other things that I'm sowing. Um, I'm using some of this root grow stuff. I'm trying to use this with all the things that I remember to use it with because um, I really love tomatoes. So I'm just putting a little bit into the bottom here. Like that. So then when I'm getting out this, just with an old spoon, There's the roots. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that the roots touch. Actually, I'll put a bit more in there just to make sure. 
around the edges. Make sure the roots on here touch the um, touch the mycorrhizal fungi. And then just fill around the sides. Ta -da! Then I'll just give that a water and then label them all of course so I don't get them muddled up. I know what's what. For now, this is my little potato cave. I'm going to plant all my potatoes in here just to give them a bit of protection because it's still getting quite cold at night and things. This won't be all the potatoes but um be most of them for now. I can get in there and protect myself from the rain. It's just started raining. So I'm just doing my last one of these um, pots of Orla. <clears throat> from my experiment four. Dig down to about 10 centimetres from the bottom. And I'm going to put in that hole. I'm going to put three little pellets of comfrey. Cover it with a little bit of hole. Uh, cover it with a little bit of soil. And then I'm going to put All a potato. Like that. And then cover it up. And I'm going to do the same over this side. Potato. Rub off these little chits. <laughs> cover that. And then on this top level, three pellets. So the, the lowest level ones, um, there's one here and one here, and on the top levels there's going to be one here and one here. And another three pellets. some of this side to cover them up a bit and place on the potatoes on the top and then I'm going to cover that just with some compost So that's all four of the Aulas um, experiment. So let me just show you. So we've got the end one there, which is vermiculite and perlite. This one, which is just perlite. This one, which is just vermiculite. And this one, which has nothing like that in it at all. But they've all got um, potato fertilizer in, and they've all got some rock dust in, and they've all got some of this. Um, dried seaweed moisture retainer. I love the sound of the rain. It was worth buying this little plastic grow house if only just to sit out here and listen to this. So I'm doing the same for the um, Charlotte potatoes as well. Come through on there. Potatoes on top. And then the two on top going this way. And then I'll cover that with compost too. Just gonna 
mix in a little bit of potato food. Slow release potato fertilizer just on the top. And some worm cast too. That's my Charlotte done, hooray! So down the end is my uh, Sarpo Mira for Julie Drake in there. This is my Charlotte. These two are both um, Sarpo Miras. I've done two in each of those pots. Um, not the same way as I did my Julie Drake one. I simplified it quite a lot. I just put um, compost, potato fertiliser, um, some worm cast um, and some comfrey pellets in there. Both of those two. So the other thing I want to try, a bit of an experimental year, is uh, these Vigaroot um, planters. They're kind of made of like a felt and I'm hoping um, that they might stop some of the slugs from, um, uh, from climbing up the pots and getting in. But we'll see. So I'll fill that up now. And I'll do this one the same as I've done these two Sarpo mirrors, which is the same way I grew my Charlotte potatoes last year, which worked out well, so let's hope it does the same for these. So here it is out of its packaging. I think it looks a bit like a Hobbit costume. And this year's so I run out of compost, so I'll just um, earth them up as they start to poke their heads up when I get some, some more compost. So there it is, my little Hobbit Shrek bag. And we'll see if that makes any difference to how things grow. So this little moth has taken up residence on our new plastic greenhouse. Does anybody know what kind of moth it is? It's hiding in the dark so it's quite hard to see. It's sort of grey. Beautiful. Ta-da! Now they should be all ready for the broad beans. Just planting out some of my broad beans now. Got some uh, really lovely healthy tap roots on there, look at that. So um, these ones I did use the mycorrhizal, I did use the mycorrhizal fungi on, so I don't know if it's that that's helped or whether that's just good. Twist it around a bit to try and get all of the roots together. There you go. So there we have it, 24 mystery runner beans. I remember planting these and thinking that I'd have None, maybe a handful at best, and <laughs> they've all come up. And um, let's hope they grow. Really excited today, I got um, some seeds through the post um, from uh, the Real Seed Catalogue. Uh, excellent um, online seed catalogue. I would definitely recommend going to check them out. So I got um, some kohlrabi. Uh, some broccoli rab and some cucumber seeds. These cucumbers are supposed to be very resistant to a lot of um, uh, cucumber diseases and things like that and um, it gives you all the uh, information on the back. Gemma, I challenge you to a Waltama cucumber grow-off. Do you accept this challenge? Yes, Jazz. I accept your cucumber challenge. Excellent. We'll let battle commence. Right, that's me done. Now Gemma, are you winning? Yeah, I think so. Here's what I've been up to anyway. 
So in episode five, um, I showed how I started germinating some um, seeds in freezer bags on moist kitchen roll and leaving them to, to chit. Uh, and I did it with cornflowers and zinnia and this is the result a few weeks on. Um, they're probably my best growers yet. I know they're probably not that impressive to some of you, but um, seriously, I've been quite depressed with the growth scenario. I think it's because I tried to do everything too early. So um, yeah, and I'm going to pop these into well, the cornflowers at least into individual pots. Um, yeah, it's making me feel very, very happy. There we go, 15 cornflowers all repotted with a bit of vermiculite, bloodfish and bone and in compost. I can't remember the kind of compost. Now I've potted some of these up already but um, these are my gourds. Uh, these are the leftover ones actually because I think I only need a couple for the amount of space I have and the amount that they produce. Um, my syrinth. So, so these are my gourds. These are my syrinth or syrinthy, however you say it. They're all leaning towards the light because it's so dark in here. I don't have room in my green greenhouse anymore, but um, I'll get them out later. Here my monge too, they're looking quite good because they've been at my parents under good light, but um, I might plant them out fairly soon. Need to need to do a few more though. I only did five and four came up. Um, I need to do another, another five. And these are all my sweet peas, some looking better than others. Um, yeah, I've supported some of them today. I'm waiting for some dark red Churchill ones to come up in there, but they've, they're taking their time. So yeah, so that's not looking bad. And then I also bought two more dahlias. I bought this one. This has been there. I've potted this one up already. It's called Babette or something. Um, the colour on that is just beautiful. And... This one, which is probably one of the nicest ones I've ever seen as well, Cafe Au Lait. Um, but it's massive, really big, so I need to get a bigger pot to, <laughs> to put that one up in. But hopefully do that later today. So these uh, lettuces seem to be doing okay, I think. Maybe gem. There's a fennel, sweet fennel, just the one. <laughs> just one worked. Scabiosa. Uh, what are they? One on the ends of a cosmos, hasn't done much for a while. Uh, these are cosmos and nigella. A very little action on my chilies. <laughs> I was a bit late planting them, I think. My onions are looking quite good. They took a long time to, to sprout. Is it too late to plant them? Um, maybe someone could tell me, that'd be nice. Thank you. And here's my sunflowers I um, planted just before, a week or two before holiday, so they've come up quite nice. Quite excited about those. And when I was on holiday, I was there for literally 10 minutes, I'd been walking around and I found this. Um, it's a David Austin rose, obviously, as you can see, and it only cost £10. Um, I then went to a garden centre and saw them for £20, so uh, I think I've got a bit, of a bit of a bargain there. So I uh, might put that in a pot. I think it's a shrubby kind of one. Um, I'm hoping that'll be okay in a, in a pot, but that'll stay in this garden rather than down the allotment. I can't believe my fleece is still here. I put, put uh, my Sarpo Mira potatoes on to weigh it down for my Ginny Drake uh, experiment. Looks like Storm Katie didn't rip it out unless maybe one of my neighbours put it back. I don't know, but I'm really shocked that that's still, still there, but that's good. Um, everything else is fine, I'm quite pleased, apart from the weeds in my asparagus bed. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, so I think I might work on that this week. Look at all these. I mean that's really pretty but that ain't asparagus. Does anybody know what this is? It's everywhere and I do... Is it parsnip? Because if so I've got loads of parsnips <laughs> sprouting up 
everywhere. Here's the big reveal. Wow. was the right thing to do. So I'll keep that going, a little lone dandelion. Hello. So, quite a job for that. Hello Rhubarb. Now that the excitement's over, I can see that the snails have also been enjoying my rhubarb. So, I'll have to think about that. I've heard Vaseline is a good organic way. Would that be organic? I guess so. Um, and I might bake up some eggshells, good excuse to have some eggs. I just had a peek under my fleece <laughs> and I swear to God, potatoes coming up. That's the other one there. Ah, I'm pretty sure that's potatoes because they had the massive chits. So they're coming up already after it, what's it been, a week? Oh, uh, it's been a week, it's been nearly two weeks. So that's quite exciting, I think. <laughs> I think they'll be okay. Turned around and said, ow! And then I realised I bumped into her legs. So I think that they should have um, trolley men, or women, at garden centres to make sure that the wheels aren't wobbly on the trolleys, especially when you're loading stuff like manure and compost in. So there's accidents waiting to be happened. So mum said that the roots are evidently coming upside down, so I think I've planted my runner beans upside down. Found a lovely, lovely hoe in my shed. Um, so I got that out yesterday and now I love hoeing. I love it. It's my favourite. Thought they were little outs. Turns out it's uh, stop you poking your eye out. So um, I could do with some plastic bottles as well, I think. To put on well, this has happened twice now. Men come up to me on the allotment. Are you winning? Are you winning? I mean, what does it, what does it mean? Are you winning? Am I winning what? So I just kind of laugh and say, I think so, because I don't know what they mean. So, anemone, not anemone, anemone apparently, according to YouTube. Anemone. Anemone. Anemone.